Hello, and welcome back to Toadstool Tarot. Pardon my lit ring light. Can you see? I got a new ring light. You're going to see it reflected in my glasses. That's the way things are. I got today, or yesterday actually, the uh, Lonely Dreamer Tarot by M. Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Melissa Witherspoon. I'm assuming it's pronounced Wother, like mother and other. That's the way it's spelled. M. Witherspoon. The Lonely Dreamer Tarot. This one is built around an appreciation for the art of Say It With Me three times, Odilon Redon, Odilon Redon, Odilon Redon. That's how you pronounce it. It's French. He was a symbolist painter who lived during the era that is the same as Pamela Coleman Smith. He was actually about 40 years her senior, but they were alive the same time. Don't know if they knew each other. Probably not. This uh, is, I think it's self-published. Uh, yes. And it came out in 2020. I mean, this is August 2020. It just came out this month. It's a limited edition. I think it might already be out of print and not to go back into print, but there may be a few copies left at her website, which is, well, there's an Etsy shop on here, Painter Spoon, but I don't know. I think I looked at that <coughs> yesterday. <clears throat> I think it said sold out, so who knows. Comes in a little magnetic box, which I love. I love the magnetic boxes. And um, it's a very firm, sturdy box. <clears throat> Has that kind of rose petal, rubbery feel to it. Very pretty. Pretty design. Wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this um, because I think it has a very melancholy feel to it. Odilon was a very melancholy person. And his artwork reflects that. And I thought, ooh, this may sink me into a deep depression when I look at it. But I had that FOMO since it was limited edition and looked to be popular. And it did have a certain appeal to me. So for fear of missing out, I pressed the order button. The, uh, the box opens up lovely inside. There's a little visual there and a little booklet and a deck. The deck came wrapped in a little plastic band, which I prefer over, um, over, um, I don't want to say saran wrap, plastic wrap, what do you call shrink wrap. But, um, I actually prefer a paper wrap. People are still, they've moved on from, uh, shrink wrap to these plastic bands which is an improvement, less plastic, but still I wish they'd go to paper. Maybe somebody will. It comes with a little ribbon in the box to lift your book and your deck out. And a little quote in the bottom from OR. I await joyous surprises while working and awakening of the materials that I work with and that my spirit develops. Another one on the front. While I recognize the necessity for a basis of observed reality, true art lies in a reality that is felt. Ain't it the truth? Gives you some biography about his troubled life and childhood. On the back of the box, in the booklet. Pretty little booklet. Oops. Pretty little booklet. The book 
I mean, the deck also comes with several extra cards, which unfortunately are not covered or discussed in the booklet. But she uh, has an introduction here about why she made the deck, why she liked uh, Redon's images, what she did with them. She did take some liberties. These are not, strictly speaking, Redon's work. And she collaged some elements onto them. And I do have some issues therein, but we'll get to that. The cards are very pretty. Cardstock is nice. It's uh, flexible. It is um, linen finish. Very pretty back. Looks like a sort of a carpet design or something. Not quite sure. This does follow the Rider Waite Smith tradition, but um, the images are very different in many respects. I'm not sure if they weren't the cards weren't labeled if you'd be able to figure them out or follow along. And it has a font that at first put me off. It's very refined, little curly cues. But I actually kind of like it now. However, <clears throat> my biggest issue with the deck is the opening card, The Fool. Which is marked zero. It's usually a, a I think it's an unnumbered card. And I can't quite make out the figure there. They are sort of about to step off a cliff. There's a butterfly. I don't like that big white triangle. I think she she explains some of the symbolism in the book, and she explains that triangle as purity, but I don't know why it's a triangle. I don't know why it's so stark, and I don't know why it looks like there's a dirt smudge in the middle of it. It just looks to me like a piece of patched, cut-up tape or paper glued onto the front of a card with no particular purpose or intent. That's my, my biggest complaint about the deck. So there you go. It's not too bad if the rest of it's, you know, all uphill. But that is the opening card. Now, here's the question I have. There are several cards, I said, that come as extras in the deck. I'll jump to those first before the rest of the cards so I can tell you what I'm... She has this card that's on the cover of the book called The Seeker, which is beautiful. This one called The Dreamer, also beautiful. The Guardian Spirit. L'Ombre, which I think is the shadow. And this untitled art card. Now what I'm tempted to do, since I really have issues with this Fool card, is replace it with the Seeker, the Dreamer, or the unnamed art card. All of those for me work with um, work as the Fool. I, I think of the Fool as a Seeker in a way. I mean, he's open-minded, open-hearted. He's also a dreamer dreaming enough to walk off the cliff. So I don't know. I think the dreamer or the seeker would work or even even this beautiful open card here. So I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. Maybe I'll maybe I'll adjust to the fool, but I'm really seriously contemplating replacing it with one of these other gorgeous cards. Having said that, <clears throat> let's look at the rest of the deck. Here's the Magician. A little on the dark side. Can't quite make it all out. Beautiful High Priestess.
the Empress. There's a really nice wide palette Emperor in this deck. And the cards, the coloring very much reminds me, Hierophant, of uh, late summer, early autumn. It's a very colorful deck, lovers. Chariot. Strength card I have a little issues with too because of the lion above the figure's head. Looks to me like it was pulled from somebody else's art. That does not look like Redon's art to me. And while I don't mind her imposing the lemniscate above the painted image head, I'm not sure how I feel about that lion, that sort of modern looking lion. Great Hermit. Beautiful Wheel of Fortune. The colors are just astounding. Justice. The Hanged Man. Death. Temperance. You see a lot of these uh, thoughtful figures or melancholy postured figures. The devil. And the deck goes from light to dark. It's all over the map with coloring, lighting, uh, palette. It's just filled with color. The star. That. The moon. See, some are black and white, some are full color. Oh, gorgeous sun. Judgment. The world. Ace of Wands. <clears throat> ah, beautiful Two of Wands. Three. This seems to be my card. I like this version of it. Four. Now she's also uh, put in the deck two versions of the Eight of Wands because my understanding is some people have a fear of spiders. So that's, I guess, the original and this is the potential replacement, which I just like better because I love, love the color. So I'll probably opt for that one. The nine. The ten. Page. I don't think I ha uh, have seen another deck so extreme in its change of uh, of colors. Uh, as the um, since the uh, Tarot de Zozark, which is a sort of Marseille style deck, and you have a lot of the pips, some are light, some are dark, some are mid range, the colors shift all over the place. Uh, very modern art approach. This is gorgeous. It's that Queen of Wands. Beautiful. 
Lots of warm colors in this deck. Like I said, late summer, early autumn. Has that feel to it. Ace of Cups. Two, beautiful two. Three. This actually makes me want to buy an art book on Redon and check just to see where these images came from and what changes uh, Melissa made. I really like this deck. I wasn't sure when I'd seen other walkthroughs and I thought it might really <clears throat> plunge me into melancholy and depression and I don't think it will now that I see it and handle it. Beautiful color. Oh, I saw this one. I thought it was <clears throat> sort of a one-eyed freakish monster and I see now the face seems sort of under a veil or behind a veil there's a band there I guess that I thought was a single eye I guess it could still be an eye no I think it's a head wrap and a and a hat or something I'm not sure if the face is actually veiled or just very uh, darkly lit. <clears throat> it's the uh, King of Cups. It doesn't appear very kingly to me, but it's interesting. Ace of Swords. Two. this ring light thing is working for me. It's bright, but it's also giving me some glare. It was a bargain. I think it was only about $15 on Amazon, but Nice nine of swords. I think one might have wondered whether a black and white would work in the same deck as full color, but I think it does. I don't have any issues with that aspect. <clears throat> Beautiful. This is a deck that even if you didn't work with it <clears throat> as tarot, it's just a really pretty art deck to look at the images. The colors are actually bright and uplifting. I think in this deck, this is one of my favorite cards, the Four of Pentacles. It's a little different depiction, and I love the character, character quality in that face. A little different art style than some of his other images.
This also looks like it would be a great companion deck for my uh, John Waterhouse Oracle, which was from around the same era, the late 1800s, and, um, and the Tarot of Delphi, which was culled from artists in the same period as well. Now, they weren't symbolists. They were pre-Raphaelites, but... Uh, symbolism is sort of a precursor to surrealism, I guess. But it has a lot of the sort of classic romanticism that held over from um, a pre raphaelite art, a neo neoclassical. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. <laughs> I studied art in college, and I have a few references, but you can, you can do your own research there. Oh, we're already at the end, King of Pentacles. Wasn't well, that a nice, nice little deck? Let's go back again to look at those extra cards. The Seeker. The Dreamer. Oh, love the colors in that. The Untitled card, art card. The Guardian Spirit. It's a little eerie. Head, floating head, and Lombra. Lombre. So that is the Lonely Dreamer Tarot. Enjoy.